Welcome to Lolly Tasking with ADHD. I am your host, Dr. Lolly, a multi passionate mom of three, a physician, and an ADHD life coach. Because, like most of you amazing women listening, I have ADHD. Join me as we chat about how ADHD affects our lives and learn strategies to help us all thrive, not just survive, with ADHD so we can live the life we want while accomplishing all our goals. Let's get started. Welcome to Lolly Task with ADHD. Again, I am Dr. Lolly a physician and ADHD trained life coach for easily distracted badass women who are just tired of being stuck in stagnant state of busyness and are ready to create the productive momentum to get them to the next level without sacrificing time from their family. So before we get started, um, I would like to give a shout out to Shelly. Shelly heard our podcast, I think it was podcast number three, about masking. And she was so excited when she listened to it. She said, oh my God, this is so informative. I thank you for your podcast and I'm about to binge it. Thank you, Shelly. I really appreciate you. I love that you found it informative and I appreciate the feedback because this is what keeps us going and this is what motivates us to get more episodes out there. So if you love this podcast, I encourage you to like, leave a review and share with your friends, everybody, so more people can talk about it and give us inspiration to continue to do what we're doing, okay? Um, So today's podcast is actually a pre-recorded podcast I did where I talked about planning and having a vision and goal when you have ADHD. And I go through my seven-step process that I typically use to plan for my ADHD. Um, And I'm going to leave like the seven steps, the key steps in the show notes. But I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions or concerns or worries, or there's just anything you just don't know, or you want me to talk a little bit more about, feel free to contact me and I'll be glad to answer it. So without further ado, hello. Uh, Welcome to me discussing about how to create a vision and goal so you can thrive in spite of your ADHD. However, when you're listening to it, be it in my chorus, be it on my podcast, I am so excited you are here with me today and I cannot wait to um, talk to you about this amazing topic of vision and goal planning. So for those of you guys that don't know me again, I am Dr. Lolliday. I am a mom of three. I'm a physician, double boarded. I'm also a multi-passionate entrepreneur. As you guys know, we ADHD, we have our heads in everything, but the, the idea is being a visionary, right? And I talk about that a little bit in the business aspect of, our, of, of my program that um, I help moms with. And I'm also a productivity and mom life strategist. And what this means is I help busy badass mom who are just killing it in whatever field they are or or you're an entrepreneur and they're thriving already in that. I help them be able to thrive in both so they can have a work-life harmony, right? Because we know as women, we want to thrive in everything. We just don't want to be like great at home and not have a fulfilled career if that's what we want to do or having a, a thriving at work and not having like, you know, the ki- the kind of kids we want or the kind of family we want. Like we, we tend to try for like a good harmony in both. We don't like it to be lopsided. So I help moms with that. And... Uh, more importantly for you ladies, I am also an ADHD trained coach for women. So um, I was trained by the ADD Coaching Academy, which is one of the best coaching program out there. You can Google it. Some of the uh, founders of coaching actually taught us in that school. It's amazing. So me talking to you is a combination of my life experiences as a woman who's a physician and who grew up with ADHD and is thriving with it. And um, my experience as a physician and knowing the biology of ADHD and using that to our advantage to learn how to work with it. And my coaching experience, I really do think the best way to treat ADHD is merging the medical aspect 
and the coaching aspect because no matter even if you're on a medication if you don't have the strategies if you don't have the right strategies I must add to kind of get coaching to the next I mean to get yourself to the next level it's really hard to um, thrive on it okay so if you're wondering is what Dr. Lolity talking about for me it is for you if you're a woman diagnosed with ADHD or you think you have ADHD, and I said you think you have ADHD because I live in the USA and I know it is so hard for some people to have access to like mental health or have access to a neuropsychologist that can actually diagnose you. But a lot of the symptoms you can talk to people because, like, oh my goodness, like I have this. I've been wondering what's going on with me. So if you're one of those people, you are still welcome. I, I got you, girl. Um, and not only if you have this, you're ready to thrive with your ADHD and not just surviving, right? Because it's easy to just survive, right? But it's hard to thrive because with thriving, you got to put in some work. And when we hear work, we run away. But you have to think about work from a my stem standpoint, right? Living with ADHD is hard. Working to thrive with ADHD is hard. And the question is, what hard are you choosing, right? I am choosing the hard to help me thrive with my ADHD. So you are ready, okay? You're ready to level up and stop letting ADHD take up your life. You are ready to stop let ADHD be a because of, right? I can do this because of. I want us to turn it to an in spite of. So in spite of my ADHD, this and this, and this is one of the things I talk about in our program, okay? And you are also here in the right place if you are ready, okay? If you are ready, I want you to tell your brain, yes, I'm ready. No matter if you're listening in your car, if you're watching on your laptop, wherever you are, you have to let your brain know you are ready with excitement, please, okay? So why are we here? So I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about um, ADHD-friendly vision and goal planning. I'm going to talk a little bit about our men membership site, Accomplish with Ease, because I need you guys in there, okay? You, we have badass women just killing it. So I need you to join us. And um, I'm going to talk about some amazing gifts that I can um, give you guys if you join our program, okay? So why? Why do we vision plan? We write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herod may run with it. For the revelation, aka the vision, awaits an appointed time. It speaks of end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, it will certainly come and will not delay. This is from Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. So if you are a Christian, you know what this, uh, this verse is about. But I tell people, even non-Christians, right? The Bible, I see not only as a manual for me to live my life because I am a Christian, but it was a book of wisdom, right? You could say the Bible as a book of wisdom. So even in the Bible, it doesn't say just think about your, your vision or your revelation. It said, make it plain on a tablet, write it out and run with it. So that's the whole idea of us creating a vision for ourselves. And here's the thing, if you look from an ADHD lens, we have this thing where out of sight is out of mind. So if we don't write it down, make it plain in our face, yes, we have goals, we have visions, but we tend to forget it if it's not in our face. So part of us creating a writ written vision is to help us have something in our face we could always allude to, okay? What about goal planning? I love this quote. It says, a vision without action is merely a dream, and an action without vision is just passing time. A vision with action can change the world, okay? So through the ADHD lens, if you lack follow through, if you lack timelines, if you lack executive dysfunction, it's hard to follow through with your goal. So how can we make this easy, okay? So I'm gonna go through seven steps. If you're anywhere near your computer or you have a paper with you, go ahead and get a pen and paper and start to write the seven steps. If you're listening or um, maybe I, I'm thinking of putting this on my podcast, if, it's, if you're listening from the podcast, go ahead and look in the show notes and you're going to have the seventh step. And if you're watching this as my course, you already have everything. So don't worry about it. Just sit back, okay? So I want you to reflect on the past 12 months. 
what a year you've had, right? No matter if this is January, February, March, okay? I am presently recording this in 2000 and what year are we at? Forget the year, in December, okay? So the last 12 years has been a doozy. So reflect on it. And why do we reflect? Yala Van Zandt said, the journey into self-love and self-acceptance must begin with self-examination. Until you take that journey of self-reflection, it is almost impossible to grow or learn in life, okay? So this is why it's important to reflect. One of my interesting movies, you guys don't laugh at me, is Eight Mile, right? And to be honest, I really don't remember what happened in that movie, but I remember one of the last part of the movies. There was this guy, Eminem, it's kind of like the story of Eminem and how he kind of was discovered or was stabbed loosely based on him. But there's this rap battle scene where he's rapping with this guy and he starts battling him. And if you guys know anything about rap battles, you take something that maybe is negative about the person and you use it to like attack them. So what Eminem did was he went ahead and just kind of like told him everything bad about him. He's like, yes, I live in a trailer trash. Yes, yes, I live in a trailer, excuse me. Yes, I did this. Yes, I did that. Yes, they did. And at the end, he said, tell them something they don't already know about me. So in you having a reflection, you're kind of telling your brain, okay, this is what I did. These are the positives from last year. These are the negative from last year, but in an objective way, not in a putting yourself down way, right? That way you could write your story. Your story is very, very important, right? Hold on, cancel. Your story is very important. I don't think we need to play that. Um, your story is very important. So how do you write your story? You have to give yourself grace, okay? Um, when I write my story, I always start with being, being grateful, gratitude, okay? And then I review my goals, my hopes, and my aspirations. Did I accomplish it? If I did not accomplish it, why or why not, right? What hard lessons did I learn the last 12 months? What wings did I have the last 12 months? And looking through the ADHD lens, you have to realize that when we see the past, we have to see the past as a rear view mirror to help us plan for the future, but not a reflection of who we are. In ADHD, we're so used to putting ourselves back down, right? But we need to review without doing that because at the end of the day, we're just being objective, okay? So go ahead and do that. So step one, do a reflective journaling. Again, I usually will talk about the five pillars that you need to focus on. So when you do that reflective journaling, start with your ADHD. How was your ADHD? What can you change about your ADHD? Did you accomplish your goals you set for your ADHD? And the reason why I always put ADHD first is that if you don't have your ADHD down pack, it is really, really hard <laughs> to get the rest of your life down pack, right? If you don't have your productivity on point, how are you going to thrive at work? If you don't have your productivity on point, how are you going to try thrive in your relationship? If you don't have your ADHD on point, how are you going to care about yourself? What about your money? How much money have you lost? One of my good friends always say ADHD is a task. Because of ADHD, I might forget to return something. Bam, I've lost money, right? So it is very, very important to focus on your ADHD first. So after your ADHD, then you talk about self-care. And you talk about family, you talk about your money makers, and you talk about your community. Okay. So this is how I would write my story. So this is an example. So I'm going to use my program as an example. So last year, um, I'm grateful for transitioning from one-on-one -on -one coaching to a group program to a membership program. Okay. So now I kind of have like a little bit of everything that way I can help everybody in all stages. And my aspiration at that time, I said, even though I have been doing this for years, I decided to go for formal education with ADCA to also become an executive function and ADHD life coach. While I did not meet my 500 women that I wanted to help last year, 
focusing on being the best coach was well worth it, okay? And then what hard lessons did I re realize from last year? I realized that I need to put money into my business and spend more money on ads and let people know about me so I could help more people, right? If you don't know I exist, how can I help you? And then my wins last year was, I finished my coaching program, go Lola, go Dr. Lola, go Dr. Lola. And I've actually hired ADHD trained coaches, okay? Nothing against life coaches that don't have experience with ADHD, but I recommend if you really want to get your ADHD on point, I recommend asking the coaches if they're ADHD trained and what program it is. And if whatever program it is, is it a certified program, right? So it's very important you do that. Now, number two. So what did we say? Number one, number one, you know, have a reflection your story, right? That's number one. Number two, design your future. So with designing your future, basically it's like you create your life. So it's like building a house. I see goals and vision as like building a house. So the first thing is like thinking about your story. What kind of house do I want, right? Then the next thing is you go to the architects and designing. How do I want my house to look? How do you want your goal to look? So one of the things I say is, it's always good to look at the end game. It's your 100 year old birthday. You'll be friends and family. And you've asked them to record a short video about you. What do you ideally want them to say about you? What about your life made you happy or made them happy, right? What vision? Then after you've thought about that, just wait like 30 seconds, think about that. You could pause, think about it. Now think, what vision do you have for the next 12 months that will take you to that 100 year old vision, right? So it's always important to do that. So for me, I may say, oh, in 12 months, um, where, well, in not in 12, but in like a 100-year-old birthday party, they say she was tired of seeing amazing, badass women struggle, and she did something about it. She became an ADHD coach and had one of the best ADHD coaching program in the world, hands down. More importantly, she helped generation of women actualize their potential in spite of their ADHD. Okay, that's what I want people to talk about in regards to my program. So now looking back and breaking it down into 12 months, how am I gonna get that to happen? I'm gonna help 500 women this year thrive with their ADHD, okay? So I want you to do the same thing, but while you're doing that, I also want you to think about in the next month, what do you wanna do? Write a I will, I call it a I will. Okay, start with habits and skills and then move on to things you want less, less of and things you want more of. So things I want to get better at, a bad habit I want to quit, a new skill I want to learn or improve. Um, I want to spend more or less money on blank. I want to spend more or less time on blank. I want to, I want to think more or think less about something and I want to do more or do less about something. Go ahead and write those down, okay? So three ideas that you cannot get to your definition point or your destination, not definition. You cannot get to your destination if you don't focus on the path in front of you. So I want you to do that again for your ADHD, your self-care, your family, your money makers, and your community, okay? All right, so let's move on. Next, designing your future, okay? So, oh, we talked about designing your future. Next, creating your foundation. So number one, you write a story, right? You review your past. What kind of house do you want? What kind of goal did you want? What kind of house did you have before? What didn't you like about the house? Did you look through Instagram and said that you like this about other people's house, right? So that's your story. Number two, designing the house, going to the architect, talking about what kind of house you want, what kind of goal you want, what kind of vision you want. Then number three, laying the foundation. A solid foundation is important, right? To have a solid foundation, you need actionable goals. 
which are the path that helps you get to your destination. You need strategies and goals that work for your unique brain. Every strategy you see online or YouTube does not necessarily work for your ADHD. In other ways, sometimes it actually makes it worse, okay? So that's why you need to talk to an ADHD specific coach that can help you with this. So number one, it's your, I mean, number three is your foundation. So I have a, a framework I do called Smarty, okay? Not just smart. Have you guys heard about creating a smart goal? For ADHD, it's called creating a smarty goal because we're smarties, all right? So it's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, inspirational, and energy. So what does specific mean? Specific is like, do you want to accomplish the goal? Who needs to be included? When do you want it to happen? Why is this a goal? Measurable. How can you measure progress and know if you've been successful in meeting your goal? Achievable. Do you have the skills required to achieve this goal? If not, can you obtain them? Is the amount of effort required on par with the goal and will you achieve it? Relevant. Why am I setting this goal now? Is it aligned with my overall objectives and values? Time bound. What's the deadline and is it realistic? In addition to time bound, it's like how much do I want to do at a time? I add that in there as well. Inspirational, what is the motivation for this goal? What is your big why, right? I always say your motivation or your big why is the guys that gets you going when you're tired. So you need an inspiration, especially for ADHD. So this was added for us, okay? Energy, does this excite your brain whenever you think about the goal or does it fizzle out? How can you bring appropriate energy every time you come on, right? Let's see. Okay. So I use the Smarty Goal template to create one goal, just one. We don't want to do too much, you know? We ADHD, we feel like we just got to do this and no, 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 no. Just stick to one goal, okay? If your brain is telling you need, you need 10,000 goals, tell your brain, little brain, after one goal, we'll move on to the next one. Yes, write out the 10,000 goals you have to do, right? But then say, okay. Let's focus on this one goal. The reward for going to goal number two is because we finished goal number one, okay? So go ahead and do that one goal for ADHD, self, family, money, makers, and community. So, so let's give an example. So here's my example for creating my foundation for my program specifically. So specific, I want to help 500 women thrive with their ADHD via accomplishing with ease program, which is a coaching membership and support program, right? My M, measurable. So with 50 amazing women join monthly, I can get to this goal, right? So now I know I have to get at least 50 women to join the program every month. If I get 50 women to join the program every month, I will get there, right? And let's say this month, I only get two. Then I have to think to myself, okay, what is it that I'm doing? This allows you to be able to pivot or to change things around if you're not tracking it, right? So if you don't ever measure it, you can go the whole year like, wait a minute, what happened to my 500 women? I wanted to help this year. So in whatever you do, make sure it's measurable, right? Achievable. Um, and that remember, that's like, do you have the skills and stuff, right? So for me, yes, it's achievable. I have an ADHD coaching certification. Um, I have hired business coaches to help me. Actually, let me let you guys know a little secret. I went ahead and did this for myself, which is why I'm putting it on here. And it wasn't until I did this and I was like, okay, is this achievable, right? And that was when I thought to myself, you know what? I need to hire a business coach, right? Stop lying to yourself that you don't need a business coach. You're a physician. You don't know jack squat about business. I'm an entrepreneur, right? But let me work on my zone of genius. So that's when I joined this amazing business um, program, literally like a week ago, right? Because I was like, okay, how can I get to my destination, right? 
So think about that. So when you're thinking, is this achievable? Think, okay, what are the things I'm bringing to the table? I'm bringing my experience. I'm bringing my coaching um, training. I'm bringing me as a physician. I'm bringing the fact that I've done this before and I've helped many women do it, right? So I can achieve it from that standpoint. But the other part of, okay, how do I get this 500 women? I don't know anything about marketing, right? And it's not me putting myself down. It's me being factual, right? So that's why this is important. And it wasn't until I did that and I reflected on it and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should join a coaching, a business coaching program or that allows and gives you ability to market yourself and such, right? So number um, three or four, relevant, are relevant. Why am I setting this goal now? Is it aligned with my overall objective? So this last four parts, it's almost like a reminder reasserting is this right for me or not right the first half i see it as the concrete part right okay the specific measurable achievable that the last half is like am i ever supposed to be doing this because you guys know we're so quick to jump to so many goals but the question is are we supposed to be doing it so is it relevant is this among my values yes it's totally relevant for me is it time bound what's the deadline and is that deadline realistic? You telling yourself that you're going to get 500 people in two days does not make sense, right? Like I want to lose 50 pounds. If I tell myself I'm going to lose 50 pounds in two days, no matter how amazing I am at working out and not eating bad stuff, I, it's not going to happen, right? So that is not a realistic time-bound goal. So for me, yes, it's achievable. My goal is to have it done in 12 months, you know? Is it inspirational? With our ADHD brain, remember, purpose, we need purpose, we need value, we need things that are bigger than us. Yes, I worked too hard to get here. And I want to help other women like me that work so hard, but help them work smart. That way, they can own their ADHD. Because one thing I know about people with ADHD is we're amazing we're strategic we are creative right we should be the top of everything why wouldn't you want someone who has ADHD the problem with us is not all our good parts that people wish they had right let's not lie people are a little jealous of us okay maybe not jealous but they wish they they had some of the the things we had but when we don't follow through that's a problem right? So let's own on that inspirational aspect of it. I really want to help us, especially women, get to where we need to be. Energy. When you think about your goal, does it excite your brain or does it fizzle out? And how can you bring the appropriate energy to your goal? Yes. Can you tell how happy I am when I'm talking about this goal? When I think about all of the women I'm about to help, it motivates me. Okay, because I'm, I just know once you help a woman, not only are you helping a woman as a pediatrician, I know this for a fact. If you want to help a child to do better in eating healthier, the best place to do it is go and talk to the mom. Help the mom see the value in it. We all know that a lot of moms have children with ADHD. Can you imagine if you're able to thrive with your ADHD? you can pass that on to your children, right? Because we know it's inheritable, right? And most moms don't even get diagnosed until their children get diagnosed. So will my child suffer as much as I did? Not really, because I'm already giving her some strategies that's gonna help her thrive. So that's number, four, number three. Number three is so important. That's why you're gonna spend majority of your time. Think through it. Spend some time working on it and get that down, okay? Number four, anchor your cornerstone. What does this mean, anchoring your cornerstone? Motivation is what gets you started, but habit is what keeps you going. This is by Jim Roy. Anchor your goals with habits. So one thing with us is, again, we're amazing about doing plans and goals. We have big, lofty plans. But do you know what would actually help your goals succeed is the habits and cornerstone habits in them. And what are cornerstone habits? 
Cornerstone habits are key habits we develop that interact with other behaviors and become the building blocks we use to create sustainable changes in our lives. So how do you do this? First, the goals you created in number three, right? I need you to go look at that foundation and think to yourself, what is one thing if you do, it will help you actualize majority of your goal in that specific category. This is the smallest, easiest, actionable step you can work on every day to get to your goal, okay? And you have to think about it. Okay, if I do this every day, how much would it be applied to weekly? How much will it attain to monthly? What about quarterly? Or is there something different I need to do weekly and monthly and quarterly? Or is there something I need to do daily? How will you track your goals daily, right? So let's say your big goal was losing weight. Maybe your cornerstone habit is, I need to do better in drinking my eight glasses of water a day. That doesn't seem like a lot of stuff. But if you did that every day, don't you see how much help it would be in losing weight? Or maybe your little habit is, you know what? I'm going to make sure I have my gym clothes out every day. So something so small that it's easy to do. Anchor your goals by tracking them. You cannot improve what you don't measure was what Peter Drucker said. And then after you're done creating the little habit, creating a tracking system for it, that you have now things to yourself. What are the struggles you foresee will prevent you from achieving your goals, right? Review them. Are there things like, okay, let's say we're talking about weight again, right? Are there things like, um, well, if I have ice cream or bread, mine is bread, yeah. If I have bread in the house, I have no willpower. I must eat that bread, right? So maybe what you need to do is not buy bread in the house, right? So those are the obstacles you need to kind of look through. So when it applies to accomplish with ease, so my smallest actionable step I could walk on every day is tell people about my program. Be visible. People don't understand when I, I'm actually quite shy. I don't tell people about my program enough for them to know it exists right? So continue working on my podcast week weekly, raising awareness, teaching people what is possible. I have to introduce myself to at least one person every day and tell them about ADHD coaching, what it is, how I can help them. You know, and I have to be in one platform a month where I get my story out there and I get um, my coaching out there. That way people know I exist. I'm not a celebrity. Fact. So how would people know there's this amazing program? All I can think of is that woman who is crying about to lose her job or that woman who's have a relationship issue because her husband's like, you forget everything. That's all I think about, right? And why do I know this? Because I've seen women who've gone through this and I've been able to help them transform. What are the struggles that would prevent me from meeting my goal? Mine is not delegating enough and doing too much. I do too much, guys. I'm working on myself as well. I coach myself every day. And I think one of the misconceptions is like, people think that once you get into coaching, it's like a pill, it just fixes everything. No, once you get into coaching, it's more teaching you what you need to do for yourself to help you thrive. It's a partnership. It's not an I fix it for you. Okay, is looking at your life and say, based on my life, this is what works for me the best. This is what works for my brain the best. Okay, so then the third question I add is, what is one thing I would do that will help me actualize my goal? The one thing is just be visible. Okay, so let's let's recap. Number one, you have to be able to have some kind of reflection by looking at your story. Number two. You have to be able to design the life you want, the future life you want. Number three, you have to lay a foundation. Number four, you have to 
have a cornerstone that makes sure that foundation is set and it's right. And number five, you have to visualize your future, okay? So you visualize your future. Is you thinking, what does achieving this goal look like to you? What rewards will you get once you've reached this goal? And then think, what is one word? What is your one word or theme that embodies the year for you? Okay. And then after you've thought about all that, I want you to write a letter to your 12-month self. And in that letter, I want you to talk about, imagine yourself, like just like transport yourself to the future, right? And imagine yourself opening that letter and looking at it. And in that letter, I want you to write as if you were in the future, right? And then I want you to write about your hope and aspirations as they are realized. The lessons, the struggles, your strengths, your wins. What thoughts do you have? What are your feelings as you have now accomplished this goal? What small actions did you take to actualize this goal? Okay. I want you to write that down and then basically either mail it to yourself or keep it in somewhere. What I do is I type it out and I put it in like a Google Doc document and then I attach that link to a reminder on December 31st, whatever the year you are, or maybe to, if you're not doing this in December, 12 months from now, right? That way on your calendar, a reminder pops up and you're like, oh my goodness, I need to like read my letter. And you read it. It's so amazing where you read it, okay? So this is a letter to myself. Dear Lola Day, girl, you did it. And you are here say maybe it's too much of a goal to me. Not only did you meet your goal, you exceeded it by a long shot. You hit your 500 that you really wanted, but it was hard, girl. It was hard. All those webinars and visibilities, waking up early to work. And even when you called yourself out for taking too much, you hired more VAs to help you. Your team has now grown for a team of three to four to now 10. You know, you now work three days a week in your clinical practice, right? That's the reward I'm giving myself. I'm going to go down. Uh, so you can dedicate one full day to administrative coaching and one full day to yourself. You feel amazing. And next year, we are going for more. Just that small action of being visible every day did it. So Sally, Lola 2.0 thriving in spite of her ADHD. Yes, AKA your future self. That's my letter, okay? And I'm hoping a year from now when we read that letter, we could be like, I did it, y'all, I did it, okay? So I, it, like, it works. L listen, guys, I've been doing this for a while now. It works, okay? So let's recap before going on. So number one, you uh, create your story or reflect on the past. Number two, you design the future you want. Number three, you lay the foundation. Number four, you create your cornerstones. Number five, you visualize the future. Number six, you create a vision board. Okay, you like vision board? What does that have to do with goals and visions? Remember in the beginning, it said, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets. For the revelation of vision awaits an appointed time. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and would not be delayed, okay? You need to see it. Outer side is out of mind for us. Outer side is out of mind, okay? You need to think about your theme or your one word or the essence of the year. That's the first thing you do when you create your vision board. After that, you gotta think about why all the stuff, all your goals are important. And then think about your thought. What does achieving this goal look like? What thoughts do you have? Your feelings, how do you feel if you achieve this goal? What big actions are you gonna take? What results are you gonna get from the goal? And what reward are you gonna get from the goal, okay? Then you put it on a board. You design it, you create it, you save it, you print it, and you frame it in that order. So mine, I design it, it looks beautiful. I should do it digital because I, Guys, let's keep it real. I don't have time cutting papers, okay? If you like to cut magazines, that's good. 
I love my Google Images. I go straight to Google Images. I search it and I put it on a, a visual board template I share with people in our community. We put it on there and then I save it. I could put it on my desktop. I could put it on my phone. And then I also print it because when I wake up in the morning, I create a ritual around it where I look at it to remind me, this is what I told myself I would do in 12 months, right? So it is very important to do that. So I think that's it. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that you will achieve your goal after hearing everything I have taught you so far, okay? Now, think about that number. If it's not a 10, think to yourself, what will bring it to a 10, okay? And I want you to think through it a little bit. What will bring it to a 10? The one thing I would bring it to a 10 is trusting your next step, okay? What is your next step? The reason why I say this is that, did you know 92% of people who say New Year's resolutions don't stick to it? And the reason why they don't stick to it is because they don't plan, they don't have accountability, they try to do it alone and they don't have a community. So we've worked on the planning aspect right now. The question is, do you have accountability and do you have a community? To make this successful, don't just hear this, actually make the vision and goal of every aspect of your life. Take action on it. Write your letter like I self. Self-share with yourself. Create your vision board, save, print, and frame it. But the one thing that would also help you is to join Accomplish With Ease Network. You know, like throughout, I would say the last year, I've kind of been like, oh, I don't want to feel like I'm selling to people. I don't want to be. And then someone contacted me about three weeks ago and she was so mad. She was a friend of mine who's had horrible ADHD. And because I was like not telling people about my program, she did not know I had this program for the last two and a half years. And she was so mad I never told her. And yes, I ended up helping her via one-on-one. -on -one, but one thing I learned from that is me not telling people about my program is not helping anybody. The reason why I'm telling you about this program or the reason why I'm bringing it up right now is to help you, okay? And just because I tell people about the program does not mean I force you to buy it or, or be part of it, right? You have to find it within yourself if this is right for you. And if it is right for you, we gladly accept you in our, in our work, right? So um, I want you to join the Accomplish With Ease Network because I have realized what the ADHD success formula is. It's a combination of having the right ADHD focus strategies with productivity management to help you achieve your goals with coaching support and accountability to get you back in line without judgment, plus community, a village of like-minded women who also want to thrive with ADHD. So while you have strategies, support, and community, you thrive with ADHD, okay? So this is it, Accomplish With Ease. It's, we call it the club. Welcome to the club. It's an ADHD membership that you pay for weekly, uh, not weekly, excuse me, monthly, or you could do it yearly, and it provides everything. If you're like, I don't know if this program is for, for me. The question is, actually, do you want to take that plan and see through the plan you just did? In our program, we actually, create the plan together, right? Uh, we meet virtually, we have music playing, we create a plan together and we follow through on it. The program is for you if you're ready. You're ready to take responsibility for yourself. You're ready to focus on you. You're ready to elevate you and stop letting ADHD take over your life. You're ready to get started with the whole you and to stop letting ADHD be a because of and to turn it into an in spite of. Like I did this in spite of my ADHD, not I did this because of my ADHD, right? Do you guys see the word choice? 
like when things are going wrong, you do it because of your ADHD. But when it's going right, you do it in spite of your ADHD. So you want to get to the in spite, okay? Again, it's a mentorship program for high achieving women, professionals, entrepreneurs who are easily distracted, right? And all they want is a safe space to learn and to grow, walk on their positive assets. Our one goal is to help you move from dealing with your ADHD, sabotaging your life, to living with your ADHD, to thriving because and in spite of your ADHD. So we provide the stepwise process, blueprint, and merge it with coaching support and village. We have planning parties. We have focus sessions. We have everything in the membership to help you. We also have all the courses, including this course that is in the program, where you can listen to whenever, including past coaching calls, including um, strategy sessions and strategies. That if you need anything, you just search it in the group and you find it. And we have weekly coaching, right? But just because we have weekly coaching doesn't mean you couldn't ask questions anytime you want. So we start with foundation, which is our self-paced content. And in foundation, we have like three milestones you made. We have discover your ADHD, live with your ADHD, and thrive with your ADHD. So many goodies. So I could go on and on and on and on about what people say about it and how we've helped. The question is, is it for you? And if it's for you, I would love to have you in a program, okay? Um, a lot of people said, someone said, it's a blessing. Dr. Lula is a blessing to women with ADHD. Her strategy is amazing. Um, I was able to banish my overwhelm, finally get family to work as a team around the house. Mind blown, truly the most humble coach and she's not shouting, I'm the GOAT. <laughs> A clear vision for life. I suggest any woman with or without ADHD partake and accomplish with ease. Take my roles to be fulfilled. Being in the program was like talking to my best friend. I feel so much happier. She told me how ADHD is not a problem of me, but how I need to overcome the problem ADHD creates in my life. Okay, so that's really it. I hope I was able to help you. Again, the seven steps in making sure you accomplish your goal this year and thrive in spite of your ADHD. Number one, do a reflection. Reflection of your goals, reflection of your story. What is your story? Own your story, right? Number two, design the future you want. Number three, lay the foundation for the future you want, which are your goals. Number four, create a cornerstone that will anchor your goals. That way you actually are able to to go through it as, right? Number five, visualize your future. What kind of future do you, do you wanna have, right? Number six, create a vision board. You have to be able to see it all the time. Number seven, trust your next step. Whatever your next step is, it has to accompany strategy, community, support, coaching. And which better coaching program to go and accomplish with ease, which is a membership site that you pay monthly for. You could cancel, you know, after one year, month, if you feel like it's not the, the perfect coaching for you. But I am so happy that you have taken time to listen to me or watch this. So wherever you are in your process, okay? And I know just the fact that you've listened to this, I am so happy for you because I know this next year is about to be amazing, okay? So you have my contact information. You can always send me a personal message on Instagram if you have any question at Lolly Tasker or via Facebook, or you could just email us as well at hello at lollytasking.com. And that's it for today. Thank you so, so very much. Um, I hope you were able to thrive and you are going to start thriving in spite of your ADHD. And that's a wrap. Hey, Lolly Tascas. I hope you enjoyed um, this episode as much as I did. Um, just to review again, today's episode was about vision and goal planning and just learning how you can elevate yourself and thrive. Again, the seven step process is going to be in my show notes just look down below 
and also how you can connect and join Accomplish with Ease network of badass women is also going to be in the show notes. If you're ready to stop worrying and leaving because of your ADHD and want to leave in spite of your ADHD, feel free to contact us. If you have any questions about the program, feel free to contact us as well. Okay, so thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you've had an amazing time and I hope you have an intentional week ahead. Don't be a stranger. If you have any questions, like I said, or want to talk extensively about anything, you can or even the, the vision and goal planning session we talked about. You can always join our Facebook group as well, which is called Thrive in Spite of ADHD. The link would also be in the show notes. And don't forget to follow us on IG at Lolly Tasker. And please, 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 please leave a review about the episode. I'd love to hear from you. And, and that's it. Till next time, remember, you can do it too. for hanging out with us on another episode of Lolly Tasking with ADHD. If you like what you've heard today, I would love for you to click the subscribe button, rate, and leave a great review in addition to sharing with your friends. Your review allows visibility and also allows other amazing women to find this podcast. Also, if you have any questions or topics you would like for us to discuss, please contact me via direct message on Instagram at lollytasker or email us at hello at lollytasking.com. Till next time, this is Lollytasking with ADHD.